What's up everyone? The veto ceremony results are in and is the Slick Six already cracking? Welcome to your live feed update. With Kevin winning the power of veto this week, he was obviously going to save himself and take himself off the block and so he did. He left Case on the block but Enzo obviously had to put a replacement nominee up and Christmas has found herself on the block up against Kesa. Now this had been in the works for a couple days after Christmas volunteered to be a pawn. Um, I think it was just basically solidifying the fact that Kesa will be going home because um, there's definitely going to be more people voting out Kesa than Christmas. If so, it could even be a unanimous vote that sends Kesa out of the door this week. But it seems solid that he's going to be heading home, but Christmas is the replacement nominee and it looks like she's going to be staying in the house this week. Now that we know that Kesa and Christmas are the final nominees for the week being left on the block after Kevin has saved himself, who do you guys want to see evicted this week? Just let me know in the comment section below. I could probably put a bet on the fact that it's going to be an overwhelming response of support for Kesa, but just let me know because I accept and love to hear every single opinion um, that people have in the Big Brother community. You may not always agree with them, but it's just great to hear them. And um, I think it's, uh, it's fantastic when all the Big Brother fans can chat with each other and I love jumping in on the conversation as well, guys. So let's let me know below who you want to see save and it doesn't even have to be about who you want to see save just maybe a comment that you've got about this week or your opinion on the wall yellow from yesterday just anything like that i just love hearing your opinion guys so just drop it in the comment section below Tyler was chatting to Davon and he apologised to her for being quite distant of late. He basically established the fact that he's uh, distanced himself from David because of all the catastrophe, catastrophe that went on a couple of weeks back with David sort of self-imploding and blowing up his own game. And as a result, Tyler distanced himself from Davon because Davon spends quite a lot of time with David. But they sort of buried the hatchet. They were fine. But Tyler started to express his concern about Danny. Now, this has been an ongoing um, sort of topic over the past couple of um, weeks, to be honest, actually. You know, it's sort of um, ever since week one or two I think people have brought up the fact that Danny is a huge threat and she's speaking to absolutely everyone in the house and Tyler is obviously a great strategic player so he's on that straight away and thinking okay what's the best thing to do so he pitches to Dave Vaughn that they should get someone outside of the six, six to target Danny so again that's a crack showing in the alliance there's more and more crack showing every single day and after the wall screaming incident yesterday with someone saying that Cody and Nicole F are playing everybody the paranoia has ramped up and uh, the cracks are just sort of getting bigger and bigger and bigger until they're just going to be one big dent throughout the entirety of that Slick Six alliance. When Dave Vaughn continued to distance herself from David last week after the whole Guys Alliance situation happened with David claiming there was a Guys Alliance, when there wasn't, it just sort of threw everything into chaos. But David and Dave Vaughn have looked to each other and said, look, it's not good if we're targeting each other. It's not going to be beneficial to either of our games. We need to band together and take out a bigger target. So they haven't made a game plan, but they've basically just said um, enough's enough and we're not targeting each other. So that's another person that's sort of off their hit list, essentially, and someone that they don't have to worry about for a couple more weeks. Cody, Enzo and Tyler begin to discuss their uh, their worry about Danny as well. Again, it's becoming a sort of reoccurring theme in the house. Everyone's getting worried about Danny and uh, she definitely needs to watch her back because they have basically said now that the Slick Six is over. They do not have any part of it. It does not exist. They just want to get Danny out sooner rather than later and they basically think that Davon needs to be out of the picture as well because if they can eliminate Davon from the scenario, they can bring Bailey in as an asset to help take out Danny but they've also been quite wary about the fact that if they take the shot too early, Early and it doesn't work they are worried that their numbers could implode because as a result you know they believe that um, the other side of that alliance still believes it's a slick six is a thing so if they take the wrong move at the wrong time things are going to go like Krakatoa and blow up and uh, it's just not going to work for them so they need to be very very careful but they have also expressed their distrust for Danny at the fact she told Nicole about the slick six so essentially the the, uh, the theme that's going around over these past couple days is Danny cannot be trusted in a social game such as Big Brother or Survivor, you have got to have backup plans for your backup plans. Boston Rob says that in his own book. Um, so very wise advice that you can take in life and also in the Big Brother house uh, or in any sort of social sort of game or scenario that you're in. But he says you've got to have backup plans for your backup plans and backup plans for those plans. And obviously we discussed there that Enzo and Tyler and Cody were sort of like discussing there the Slick Six is over. So they were the core within that Slick Six alliance. But obviously you've got to have that backup plan for that core. So Enzo and Cody Cody have that even sort of even more solid core than they had with Tyler and they discussed after the fact that they are quite annoyed with Tyler for the fact he's been very schemey sort of plotting Danny against Davon and Davon against Danny and just stirring up trouble and as a result you know even though there's that core three of Tyler, Cody and Enzo, um, Cody and Enzo have got that core of them of the two of them against Tyler so there it's just, it's just that backup plan for your backup plan and obviously the backup plan for that is having your own back and you make sure you got to know what your game is, got to stay solid with it. Don't waver and got, uh, you've got to keep your head on straight and, and know what the path is to get to the end. 
it seems that Casey's days are numbered now, so he's basically making a last-ditch effort. He knows he's not going to stay, but he's trying to do a little bit of damage onto the car, basically telling Dave on that he believes there is a strong car between Cody, Tyler, Danny, and Nicole Franzel. Obviously, there's no Nicole Anthony in the house now, so I can just retract that and say... Nicole. But yeah, guys, I mean, Case is just sort of saying to Dave Vaughn, do what you can before it's too late and um, give it give it all you can and throw the kitchen sink, guys. Danny and Ian were having a conversation about who they would target should they rise to power and Danny again just dropping hints here and there, planting those seeds that it would be a good idea to break up a, uh, a duo before they get to uh, the jury stage because, um, you know, a vote can come in too at that point. You know, Mike Buggy and Dr. Will did it. Um, it's just, if Bailey and Dave Vaughn get there, because they're definitely a well-known and sort of... Um, highlighted duo this season as people who uh, are definitely tightly working together if both of them get a jury you never know they might vote different ways but you in big brother you can't take that risk sometimes so danny's planting those seeds to make sure that bailey or davon can head out the door soon and i do believe that if danny does win her jury next week she'll definitely be targeting bailey or davon Ian requested Nicole if she would throw the, the HOH to him if they were in the final two next week for like competing for the HOH, not final two of the game, but final two of winning HOH. And Nicole said absolutely. And then she went on to ask him what he would do should he get, have that power next week and reign over the house. And he said that he would do whatever she wants. So it looks like it's going to be a core HOH next week should Ian or Nicole come into power. The most interesting and sort of last uh, game topic conversation of the evening was between Ian and Kevin and both of them were discussing the wall screaming incident yesterday and they basically said Ian was um, already on to sort of, he was he was bargaining what was going on and he was nearly there and he sussed out nearly every single person in the car but he says that the wall screamer confirmed it for him yesterday and he feels solidly now that um, he's worried about Nicole and Cody and Danny and Tyler, Enzo, all those guys working together. Obviously Ian is in cahoots with Nicole so he's not going to nominate her but Ian has basically said that house will be blown apart of Hugh and so he's out for uh, he's, he's he's out to sort of blow up the game and turn it on its head slightly um but at the same time um Kevin was sort of in the same boat sort of saying that but I think it really really did strengthen the bond between Kevin and Ian and I think they're going to work together a lot more moving forwards and definitely liaise with one another but again I think uh, it's just sort of staying weary and making sure you know what's going on in the game and I think Ian's um got a fantastic mind in this game and uh, he's got a fantastic mind for the game in general he knows um about social strategy uh, and he's just very very he's a very intelligent guy and I've got to respect him hugely for that um, so I hope to see a lot more strategizing as the days go on but Ian's in a fantastic position and he solidified himself quite well but the thing that they concluded on uh, was the fact that he believes it's not a super fair game he didn't say it was unfair but he sort of said he feels Derek and um, his meddling in the pre-season creating alliances um, has basically set that other side of the house up for success and screwed the rest of the players that's what she said that is all of your live feed updates for today, folks. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe because I'd really, really appreciate it. I appreciate all the support so far. There's a lot of appreciation going here, so show your appreciation today. To others, family members, friends, just show some appreciation, guys. Spread that appreciation. But thanks so much, guys, for watching. Um, and, uh, th yeah, that, that's the usual stuff, guys. I said all the subscribe stuff. But until your next live feed update, uh, I've been your host, Tom Vesey. Good night. <laughs>